For over 100 years, this desolate place has been synonymous with speed records. Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah have seen their fair share of motorsport triumph and tragedy over the past century or so. But in the mid-1960s, this was the scene of an epic battle for the world land speed record. At Bonneville in 1947, Englishman John Cobb had set a record of 394.19 miles per hour in the Railton Mobile Special. As the 60s dawned, the record still stood, despite many attempts to beat it. In 1960, hot rod legend Mickey Thompson had run at 406 miles per hour in his four-engine Challenger 1, only to have a blown engine prevent a return run within one hour, as the rules dictated. A week later, Britain's Donald Campbell was lucky to survive crushing Bluebird whilst chasing Cobb's record. Athol Graham was less fortunate in his home-built city of Salt Lake, the victim of a fatal 300 miles per hour accident on the salt. By 1962, jet car pioneer Dr Nathan Ostich had tried for the record several times, his J47 powered flying caduceus never quite living up to its expected potential. And the same year, drag racer Glenn Leisha had died in the jet-powered Infinity as it had cartwheeled at over 400 miles per hour, scattering him across the salt as it disintegrated. Meanwhile, in California, 23-year-old hot rodder and firefighter Craig Breedlove had his own ambition to be the fastest man on wheels. Inspired by tales of record breakers like Henry Seagrave, Malcolm Campbell and John Cobb, it was contemporary hot rodder Mickey Thompson's Challenger 1 project that finally grabbed Breedlove's attention. I could do that, he thought. As early as 1960, Breedlove was hawking his idea for a jet-powered record vehicle to potential sponsors. Over the next two years, he bought an old J47 jet engine, secured the financial support of Shell and Goodyear, and started to build the Spirit of America. Art Harfons and his older half-brother Walt had grown up working on the car and truck engines that powered their father's feed mill in Akron, Ohio. In Art's words, we took junk and made it work. By the age of 11, Art had already taught himself to strip and rebuild an engine. In 1952, Walt and Art started drag racing, building their first car in a week from junk found in the mill's yard. With a fresh coat of John Deere tractor paint, it became known as the Green Monster. It was the first of a series of cars they'd build over the next few years, all with the same name. The brothers made a living out of drag racing, sharing the prize money until a feud drove them apart. In 1959, a wall was built through the middle of their workshop, both figuratively and physically. Walt was the first of the pair to start using jet engines. He built a series of jet dragsters, naturally all called Green Monster. They were a big draw at the drag strip and led to Art building his own version, named Cyclops. Now bitter rivals, with first-hand experience of running jet engines, by 1962 Walt and Art had each started planning their own land speed projects. Towards the end of July 1963, Walt Arfons brought his jet-powered Wingfoot Express to Bonneville. Walt's recent health problems had led co-designer Tom Green to replace him as Wingfoot's driver, despite Green confessing that he'd never driven anything above 130 miles an hour. Although the J46 engine and afterburner promised plenty of power, 250 miles per hour was the best the car could manage before the team hit problems. Salt crystals were being sucked into the jet and baked onto the hot turbine blades, throwing the engine off balance. After only three days, Arfons and Green's 1963 challenge for the record was over. Once the Wingfoot Express had left Bonneville, it was Breedlove's turn. Spirit of America had run at Bonneville the year before, but issues with the car's complex steering system had limited the car to a maximum speed of 325 miles per hour, well short of the 500 miles per hour Breedlove had promised. Headline sponsor Shell had, however, been persuaded to continue its support, and by 1963, the car had been fixed and a tail fin added. At 6.30 on the morning of August the 5th, 
Breedlove ran Spirit of America through the measured mile at 388 miles per hour. To beat Cobb's 394 miles per hour record, the car would need to be turned around and run back within an hour. 40 minutes later, Spirit tore back through the timing beams, covering the mile in 8.4 seconds. The timekeepers began their calculations, and by the time Breedlove had coasted to a halt it was official. His return run meant a new record of 407.45 miles per hour. For the world land speed record, the jet age had well and truly arrived. Back in Ohio, Art Arfonce had been watching the events in Utah and hatching his own plans. He'd run his jet dragster Cyclops at Bonneville in 1962, reaching 330 miles per hour, but the small fuel tank and open cockpit meant he needed a new car to run any faster. Junkyard genius he may have been, but Art was not blind to the latest developments in jet technology. He sent out word that he was looking for a J79 engine. With more than double the thrust of the J47 in Breedlove's car, the jet was still classified by the US military. Arfons eventually found a scrap engine in a Miami junkyard, and by removing pairs of damaged compressor blades, he was able to get the engine running in his backyard, incinerating his chicken shed in the process. After six months working on the engine, Arfons spent the rest of the year building his new green monster. By late summer 1964, the car, newly painted in dark green and firestone red, was ready. In September 1964, Walt Arfon's Wingfoot Express was first to return to the Salt Flats. With limited time booked to run the car, driver Tom Green progressed quickly through testing towards an attempt on the record, and in the afternoon of their last day on the Salt, the Wingfoot Express ran through the measured mile at 406 miles per hour. With the light rapidly fading, they turned the car around and returned at 420 miles per hour. The average, a new record of 413.2 miles per hour. Jubilant, Walt Arfons and his team headed home. The next day, Art Arfons arrived on the Salt in the old bus he'd converted into a transporter. The first couple of days running Green Monster proved difficult, with the side saddle arrangement of the cockpit especially unnerving for its driver. Nevertheless, by October the 5th, Arfons was gaining in confidence, and when one of his test runs was clocked at 396 miles per hour, he decided to make the return run at full military power. Even without the afterburner, Green Monster returned through the mile at 479 miles per hour. As the Wingfoot Express team arrived home from Bonneville, they got the news that their three-day-old record had already been smashed. With a full four days running left, Arfons had raised the bar to 434.02 miles per hour. Riding high on his achievement, Art Arfons now planned to be the first to set the record beyond 500 miles per hour. His sponsors, Firestone, were nervous. Green Monster's tyres were rated to a maximum of 500 miles per hour. Higher rated tyres were coming, they said, but not for a couple of weeks. Arfoms dismissed their pleas to wait. There was no time. Two days after setting the record, Arfoms was travelling at 500 miles per hour when Green Monster's right rear tyre exploded, tearing the car's bodywork and leaving Arfoms fighting for control as the car's parachute brought Green Monster to a halt. As Art Arfoms headed home to repair his damaged car, it was time for Craig Breedlove to show what he could do. Despite having a fraction of the power, Spirit of America's sleek aerodynamics were far better than the Green Monsters. Breedlove made no secret that he was aiming at 500 miles per hour and wasn't in the mood to waste time. Two days after arriving at Bonneville, on October the 13th, he ran at a peak of 498 miles per hour for a two-way average and a new record of 468.719 miles per hour. It was the third time the record had been broken in less than two weeks. 500 miles per hour was beckoning. Two days later, Spirit of America made a run of 513 miles per hour. Within the hour, the car was ready to return. At 500 miles per hour, he entered the mile and then something on the car's suspension broke. 
As he steered to maintain control, he kept his foot down as long as he could, but when he tried to slow the car, both parachutes failed. The car's brakes were no good above 150 miles per hour, and Spirit of America streaked across the salt, barely slowing and out of control thanks to the broken suspension. Still running at over 400 miles per hour, Breedlove ran off the course and five miles later, Spirit of America smashed through a telegraph pole before being launched off a levee into a drainage ditch. As the car sank, he scrambled free. Despite his near-death experience, Breedlove had just raised the record to 526.277 miles per hour. The first man to 400 miles per hour had just become the first to 500, but his car was wrecked. Undeterred by the loss of his record, Art Arfons drove the 1500 miles back to Bonneville. As winter rains threatened the salt flats, he had the final word. On October the 27th, less than two weeks after Breedlove's spectacular accident, Arfons and Green Monster took the record back. Breedlove got the news as he gave a press conference in Detroit about his own record. As 1964 ended, Art Arfons reigned supreme at 536.71 miles per hour. Walt Arfons hadn't given up. 1965's Wingfoot Express II would be radically different to the previous car, wedge-shaped and powered by multiple Jato bottle rockets, each developing a thousand pounds of thrust. With no way of extinguishing the rockets once lit, Walt's solution was to add an explosive cap to each Jato to blow the front off and stop the thrust in an emergency. At nearly $500 for each single-use rocket, it was an expensive, exotic way to take aim at Brother Art's record. Meanwhile, Craig Breedlove had managed to buy his own J79 engine for a new car, Spirit of America Sonic 1. Taking lessons from the shortcomings of his previous car, Sonic 1 would have four wheels, more conventional steering and much better brakes. As the teams returned to Bonneville in late 65, Breedlove had an ambitious new goal in mind. He was aiming for 600 miles per hour. As soon as it ran on the salt, it was clear Wingfoot Express 2 had a problem. It was heavy, as Walt had engineered it to withstand his expectations that it might go supersonic. Being overweight limited acceleration, and since the Jato rockets burned for just 15 seconds, the car needed to start its runs close to the start of the measured mile to stand any chance of maintaining power through the timing beams. Wingfoot's driver Bobby Tatro reached a peak of 500 miles per hour with all 15 rockets firing, but the car's weight and lack of sustained power resulted in an average speed of just 247 miles per hour through the mile. Walt's answer was to add 10 more rockets, a total of 25 to be triggered in two batches. On October the 19th, Wingfoot Express 2 roared off the line as Tatro ignited the rockets, heading for the measured mile. As it sped across the salt flats, the car was lost in a cloud of dust and black smoke. Walt sped after it, fearing the worst, but when he reached the scene, he found Bobby Tatro standing next to the car, shaken by his experience. Some of the Jato's explosive caps had detonated, incinerating the inside of the car behind the cockpit. Incredibly, Walt was ready to run again within days, but the car's continuing, disappointing performance led to the Wingfoot team admitting defeat. The day after Wingfoot Express 2 burned out, Craig Breedlove ran his new car using the afterburner for the first time. As he entered the measured mile at 600 miles per hour, he realised that Spirit of America Sonic 1 had its front wheels off the ground. It was starting to fly. Unable to steer, Breedlove was rapidly heading towards the scene of his previous accident. This time, the much improved braking systems on the new car saved him, but the car still needed work. Weights in the nose and extra aero parts were added, and on November the 2nd, Craig Breedlove lifted the record to 555.127 miles per hour. However, Sonic 1's onboard recorders later showed that the car had once again come very close to flying during the record run. 
Spirit of America and Craig Breedlove were running on the ragged edge. Art Arfons did not waste any time chasing down the new record. On November the 7th, the day after his car was rolled out onto the salt flats, Arfons lined up for his first practice run. He was timed through the mile at 575 miles per hour, and so he decided to return within the hour and see if he could retake the record with just two runs. As he exited the measured mile at over 600 miles per hour, the right rear tyre blew, just as it had the previous year, only this time the explosion took the main parachute with it. The car filled with smoke as the front tyres rubbed on the wheel arches. Bits of the car were coming off and flying over the top of the cockpit as Arfons fought for control. Finally, the reserve parachute slowed the car, despite being shredded by metal fragments torn from the bodywork. Arfons got out, inspected the damage, and gave the broken rear wheel an angry kick. He was done for the year. And yet, despite all of this, Art Arfons had broken Breedlove's five-day-old record with a new mark of 576.55 miles per hour. Breedlove got the news as he arrived in New York to appear on Ed Sullivan's TV show. It was like 1964 all over again. Despite his car's tendency to fly, Breedlove came straight back to Bonneville. Arfon's sponsor, Firestone, still had the salt booked for the next few days, and so another project they were backing was allowed to run. That car was called Goldenrod, and its remarkable story will be told in a future video, so stay tuned. By the 14th, the weather was worsening, but Breedlove caught a break on November the 15th, and with Sonic 1 running at full power, he raised the record to 600.601 miles per hour. Craig Breedlove could now claim to have set the first 400, 500 and 600 miles per hour records, and was once again the fastest man on earth. In the space of just 13 days, the record had changed hands three times. In mid-November 1966, Art Arfons was back at Bonneville. Green Monster had been modified to include dual rear wheels to spread the load and reduce the chance of a third high-speed blowout. Arfons also had a secret up his sleeve. On his record runs up to now, he'd only used the first stage of the afterburner on the J79. This time, he'd light up the second stage. At 8am on November the 17th, Art Arfons headed for the mile markers trailing fire as he lit the second stage afterburner. As he corrected the steering, the right front wheel bearing seized. As in the nightmares he'd been suffering recently, Green Monster began to cartwheel. Art Arfons was travelling at 610 miles per hour when he crashed at Bonneville in November 1966. Parts of the car were found four miles away from where the largest piece of wreckage came to rest. As his support crew arrived at the scene, it was clear Arfons must have been killed. Nobody could have survived a crash at that speed, could they? Incredibly, Arfons was still conscious, barely, and had escaped without any broken bones. His eyes were full of Bonneville salt, but he recovered in time. Green Monster was finished though, and the Battle of Bonneville was finally over. The victor, Craig Breedlove, would hold the record until 1970. Neither he, Art, or Walt Arfons ever broke the world land speed record again. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and check out my channel for more tales of record breaking. Until next time,